Document retention is al always a questionable area for mm -hmm. employers, and particularly for I-9s with the penalties, as we've discussed. Really, what are the requirements for retention of these, these I-9 forms and any documentation? I would tell you, if I was, as an employer, and our firm's an employer just like anybody else, you want to have backup. You want to probably have the paper I-9 forms in the one folder we were talking about in a locked cabinet. I would also be scanning my I-9s in electronically to have a backup. You say, say maybe I get an ICE officer coming for an audit and I want to produce copies of the I-9 forms, um, I want to have a backup copy to make sure that I can locate them in a short time notice, especially if I've got multiple locations and I, I just want to have a backup. I don't want to depend on that one file and not be able to find it. So in fact you are able to scan and load mm -hmm. these in a computer. That does not violate nope, any not Privacy bit. Act or any parts of this law. Not a bit. Um, you do have certain requirements. Let, let's talk about the retention requirement. And this is kind of a nice little form to help you understand. You have to retain an I-9 form for three years from the date it was filled out completed or from one year after the employee leaves you whichever is longer. Say somebody has worked for me for six months. I've got to retain that I-9 form for two years and six months after they leave my employment. Say if they work for me for four years, I've got to retain that I-9 for one year after they left my employment. Does that? It makes sense, okay. but it's just more paperwork to I keep understand. up with. That's so, why this form would be very valuable. And what you need to do as an employer is set up a form retention because you don't really want to keep I-9s that are 10, 15 years old um, to the extent that maybe you made errors on those I-9s that weren't corrected and things like that. But you need to, to have uh, you need to have an internal retention policy that complies with the statutory requirement. So you can re retain them three different ways. Paper retention, microfilm, I don't mean to know many people doing that anymore, but microfilm retention or electronic forms retention. You're able to set these forms up. A large employers a lot of times are setting these up as totally electronic documents. They're having employees come in and electronically sign in their blocks. They're having the employer section electronically sign. They're storing them totally electronically. So that's an option. Or you can do what we're talking about, paper fill them out, scan them in, and save them electronically. You've got to have ways to index them and, and retrieve them as the main issue. Then you've got to make sure you've got backup. So if you're going to store them electronically, you want to have some other backup drives that you can retrieve those on. And, and that's just a good, but you can store them all, you know, three, at least three different ways. Um, so, as I was talking about reasonable controls to ensure the integrity, the accuracy, and the reliability, reasonable controls designed to prevent and detect unauthorized or accidental creation of or addition or alteration. We want to make sure they can't be altered, that they're static documents. An inspection and quality assurance program that regularly evaluates the electronic generation or storage an indexing system that permits the identification and retrieval, and the ability to re reproduce le um, you know, legible and readable paper copies. So if ICE comes in and does an inspection, they're going to ask you to produce paper copies. Uh, they're going to ask you to spit them out of the printer and produce them for inspection. Well, I guess the other thing that comes to my mind is be sure there are two people that have access because what, what if one the main one is on mm -hmm. vacation when has ICE a, walks in the has door. A password and oh, where are they? Yeah, yeah, you do need.